Good morning, everyone. This is my first time I'm addressing such a diverse American community. I'm honored to be here. Um, my name is Hayat Cindy. I'm the co-inventor, co-founder of Diagnostic for All. Before I start to talk to you about Diagnostic for All, I would like to share with you a bit of my journey and my passion. My journey has involved breaking boundaries between East and the West to help society to serve everyone, child, man, or woman of different religion or culture, not fearing to find the good and value of people who work together, humanity together. I was born in Mecca, and I come from a family of eight children with traditional upbringing and enormous love for knowledge. Since childhood, I really admire characters who did something for humanity, either in the area of medicine, literature, or science. I dreamt one day to be like them, to make a difference in this world. 17 years ago, I left home in my teens on my own, not a word of English, to Britain, to follow my dream to become a scientist. It wasn't been easy. But I managed to graduate with honors from King's College University in London. And I was lucky to get a full scholarship from Cambridge University where I did my PhD in biotechnology. Almost three years ago, I came to Harvard. I came to work in a very special scientific lab that by everybody's standard is a fantastic lab. Why it is fantastic? Because this lab is making great discoveries to help society and community at large. This is Professor George Whiteside lab. There we came with a unique invention. We came with a unique invention all the time, but this one specifically is going to help people, uh, save people's lives. With this invention, we were the winner of both competition last year, Harvard Social Enterprise Competition and MIT 100K Competition at the same year. And then we established a company on this invention, we call it Diagnostic for All. So what is Diagnostic for All? Our mission is to provide a very low cost healthcare solutions to improve health worldwide. We are a non-profit enterprise. I will come to talk about the technology and application in a minute. Millions of people are dying around the world because they cannot afford access to diagnostic tools to monitor their health. This picture shows you the core problem. People in the developed world have been sending lab equipment to developing countries to manage their health. As you could see here, the lab is old and bulky and the conditions are unsanitary. This approach doesn't work and it never will. Diagnostic for All has a solution. Diagnostic for All can put the power of the entire diagnostic lab at the patient's fingertip. And here it is. Can you see it? You can't? Okay, here's a picture of it. <laughs> Let me talk to you about the technology a bit. Our technology is made of paper, so it's very low cost, as low as a penny bear device, and it's portable, you can carry it, you can fold it, you can put it in your pocket. It doesn't require highly skilled person to operate it. It doesn't require external power or reagent. And above all, it's safely disposable. You can just light it with the match and incinerate it. Also, our technology is very, very tiny. It only requires a minimum amount of tears or saliva or urine, which is going to travel a few millimeters to give you the result in second. What makes our technology so unique? Because we can do all of this on a piece of paper while maintaining the high level of quality. Let me show you how it works. If you take a drop of urine, saliva, cheese, blood, and place it on the device, the fluid wicks up the channels and reacts with chemical reagent placed in the wells. The color change is according to what we have in, uh, for example, in urine. Here we are testing for glucose and protein. This is just one example of what we can do. We have a suite of diagnostic tools with many devices, different shape, and we can test for different application. 
Our first application we choose is liver function test. There are a huge number of patients who under medication of HIV, AIDS, and TB suffer from liver damage. They, because they take many pills to, for their medication and they can cause liver failure. How we deal with this problem? For example, here in the US, by monitoring a constant blood test taken from the patient so the doctor, he can keep an eye on the liver condition. So he can change the core of medication before the liver damage. What's happening in a developing world? It doesn't happen. And even if the patient is lucky to be a near central lab, it takes weeks for results to come back. And by that time, A, it's very difficult for the doctor to track the patient because they come from far away from a remote area. And also for the patient, it's very hard to recover the liver condition. I wanted to show you this diagram. In the US, 15% of the patient under medication of HIV, AIDS, they develop, sorry, 5%, they develop liver damage because they're being monitored. While in a developing country, 25%. That means 700,000 will die eventually if they're not being treated and monitored. This is only HIV uh, AIDS uh, under medication. If we add the TB, this number will jump to 2.3 million will die eventually per year. And consider that they die not because of the disease, it's because of the side effect of the drug that's supposed to save them. Diagnostic for all can solve this problem head on, simply by monitoring. And here's how it works. This is a new different shape of device. If you take a drop of blood, squeeze it gently on a device, and turn it over, it gives you the result within second. And providing the color scale, the medical doctor can tell if the patient has a liver problem. And the beauty about this is the doctor can go and can screen whole village then and there and can have the result and take an action. We are not just about liver function tests. We are developing a suite of diagnostic tools, such as in kidney function and electrolyte. Because our technology is so sophisticated, right, we believe that, it's going to expand our market area, such as in low uh, testing pollution and uh, water testing pollution and emergency response. Also, we introduced telemedicine. It's going to be our future complement to our device. For example, if the doctor uh, in a remote area and he wants to have a digital number, he wants to have more precise number, he can take a photo of the device and he can SMS to a central lab in Africa or even to US and we can give them the result. Here is our team. We have a great team, a mixture of MD, PhD, and MBA. Our board of directors headed by Professor Whiteside had great experience and understanding to how to make this enterprise to work. Diagnostic for all is going to benefit all of us and it's going to take all of us to make it work. So we need your support. Before I leave you, I have uh, something to share with you, what I have learned from uh, my journey so far. And I want to take this chance because we have here um, Al Arabiya TV channel filming me. Um, my first message is to the all the women, and especially the women in the Middle East. I wanted to say to them that you are strong, you are smart, you are intelligent, and you can also make breakthrough. You can put hand in hand society and science. I had a dream when I was a child to make a difference, and it's all happened. Second thing, and finally, what I wanted to mention is innovation cannot lead by its own. That's why you are here in PopTech. We need to lead innovation. Clearly, one science, one man, and one market, it will lead by itself. Personally, I think the leadership should be taken by people who love diversity, who stand out as a force, people who love a mixture, range of job, people who can bring in other people, different skills, people who, are, who, who cares, don't have to wait for anybody else, and people who are brave to make a boundary, to break the boundaries and make a value in the 21st century. I think all of us, we can take the lead, and the power is, is us doing, doing it together. Thank you very much.
Thank you so much.